hi sunshines welcome back to my channel my name is tina and in today's video i'm going to talk about 11 historical monuments and landmarks in montego bay now even though the city is known for its world-class resorts beaches and nightlife montego bay is more than just sun sand and sea rather it offers you the possibility of an eclectic travel experience with rich cultural heritage, beautiful architecture, and warm and talented people. The city features several historical monuments that should be of interest to both locals and visitors alike. In today's video, I'm going to share with you 11 historical landmarks and monuments in Montego Bay that you can visit on your next trip. I will indicate in the video which sites offer tours. So let's start this journey at Sam Sharp Square where three of the monuments on this list are located. Many Montegonians walk past Sam Sharp Square on a daily basis, not necessarily giving thought to the historical significance of the name. In the 1800s, the sugar industry was vast and prosperous as a result of slave labor. This gave plantation owners the ability to build elaborate houses. In the middle of this lavish lifestyle, African slaves were subjected to cruel living conditions. This led to an uprising in 1831 to 1832, during which many of the plantations were burnt down. However, British troops were able to quell the rebellion. To set an example, the revolt leader Baptist minister Samuel Sharp was hanged in this, the central area of the city, along with many slaves. The uprising came to be referred to as the Christmas Rebellion or the Jamaican Baptist War. Slavery was abolished soon after in 1834. Many historians believe that though the rebellion did not directly lead to the freedom of slaves, it did somewhat accelerate the abolition. In 1975, Samuel Sharp was proclaimed a national hero, and what we now call Sam Sharp Square was named after him, and a statue erected there in his honor. The Cage if you have been to Sam Sharp Square, you might recall seeing two small brick and mortar buildings reminiscent of the architecture of the 1800s. The building to the far right is the cage. As the sign states, the cage dates back to 1806. A belfry was built in 1811. In about 1823, this was replaced by today's building of brick and mortar. The cage was used as an overnight lockup for vagrants, drunks, runaways, and plantation slaves who had not left town after the 3 p.m. warning bell. Number three, the old courthouse. The old courthouse, now the Montego Bay Cultural Center, is most widely known for the trial of national hero Sam Sharp, held in 1832. The courthouse was built around 1774 and has since been restored to its current state. The cultural center now houses the Museum of Montego Bay. So this is one side of it. Number four, the Creek Dome. The Creek Dome, located at the corner of Creek and Dome Street, was erected in 1837 to protect the mouth of the creek, which at that time was their best source of fresh water. The room at the top of the structure was the home of the gatekeeper who would collect payment from villagers who came for water. In 1894, piped water was introduced and there was decreased usage of the dome. It has since been closed for service. Number five, St. James Parish Church. Located on Church Street, the St. James Parish Church is situated on a property with tombstones dating back over 200 years. It was built between 1775 and 1782 and was dedicated to patron saint of Spade, St. James the Great. 
The architectural design of the building features the Greek cross plan and was constructed with limestone. Also located on the property is a monument to Rosa Palmer, who is the former owner of Rose Hall Great House. Okay. This is Rose Palmer's grave. I don't know if you can if you can see it clearly. Rosa Palmer. The church sustained severe damage during the 1957 earthquake. As a result, substantial repairs were done. However, the repairs did not significantly alter the original design. Number 6. The Town House the townhouse is also situated on Church Street opposite St. James Parish Church. Based on a keystone over the basement entrance, it can be inferred that it was built in 1776. The building has three stories and is constructed of wood, brick and cut stone. Initially, it was built as a private residence. However, throughout the years, it became a hotel at one point. Then, the upper floor was the home of the first synagogue in Montego Bay, after which a Masonic lodge was housed there for 50 years. Then, a restaurant was located at the lower level of the house. Number 7. Fort Montego the British expedition in 1655 led to the Spaniards being forced out and the establishment of St. James as a parish. Fearing retaliation from Spain, a number of forts were built for defence along the coasts of Jamaica. Their purpose was to defend the island from constant threat of foreign invasion. Fort Montego, also known as Fort Frederick and Fort George, houses five small guns and four 12-pounder guns. It was considered an inefficient fort, possibly because it was not well maintained. In 1760, one of the guns of the fort exploded, killing the officer who was firing a salute as celebration for the surrender of Havana. The reason for the explosion was rust on the gun. According to the sign on the property in 1779, the fort underwent major reconstruction. The only occasion in which it saw military action was in 1795 when the officers stationed at the fort fired at a British ship that they mistook for a French privateer. Thankfully, no lives were lost. The guns and cannons were mostly fired to celebrate British monarchs' birthdays or when a person deemed important visited Montego Bay. Number 8. Greenwood Great House the Greenwood Great House was built in 1790 by the Barretts of Wimpole Street. The Honorable Richard Barrett, who was the Speaker of the House of Assembly and Custos of St. James, owned both Greenwood Great House and Barrett Hall at that time. He was cousin to Victorian poet Elizabeth Barrett Browning and the Moulton Barretts of Cinnamon Hill. The house now functions as a house museum. It still has the original library of the Barrett's family, antique furniture, and music machines which is played for you during your tour. Number 9. Rose Hall Great House Rose Hall Great House is a popular tourist attraction nestled on the top of a hill overlooking the sea. The 18th century beauty was restored in the 1960s and is now a historic house museum, offering patrons guided tours both day and night that includes the legend of Annie Palmer. The great house features Georgian architecture with cut stone and stucco used in its construction. Number 10, the old slave ring. The Old Slave Ring is possibly the least popular historical site in Montego Bay. I must admit that I only heard of it while doing research for this video. It can be found at the corner of Union and East Streets. It's a semicircular structure with brick walls almost looking like an arena. This is a site where slaves were auctioned. Number 11. Birchell Memorial Church 
The Burchell Baptist Church, located on the corner of King Street and Market Street, was established in 1824, at which point it was under the care of Thomas Burchell and had 12 members. Along with Thomas Burchell, other Baptist missionaries from England came to offer support. The church was against slavery, so many of the enslaved and freed population soon became members of the church, making it the most popular religious group at that time. It is also the church where Sam Sharp was deacon. After he was hanged for being the leader of the revolt, he was buried at the Montego Bay Harbor under the sands. However, his bones were exhumed some time after. He was then interred in a vault at the Burchell Memorial Church. The present church was reconstructed after it was destroyed during the Baptist War, with cornerstones being laid on February 7, 1835, and was later dedicated on March 26, 1837. The current structure was once the manse for the church. There are many more monuments to discuss. If you found this video informative and would like a part 2, please like, share and comment below as this lets me know that you would like to see more videos of this kind. And don't forget to subscribe. Of course, if you have any additional information, please do not hesitate to include it in the comment section below.